Well, let's, you know, talk about the elephant in the room. I'm not talking about my belly or my dick. <laughs> you look slim. Thank you. I'm talking about what happened to me. And I, people are curious to see what happened to me. And uh, I want to tell people in the, in the healthiest way I can, you know, without going into extreme, you know, details. But um, essentially something happened um, a while back in my life that um, just put me, that shocked me and it kind of traumatized me. And, um, you know, it's okay, babe. I'm so sorry. It's okay, babe. So, so rude. So serious and the largest it's slur. so rude, but you know what? I I'm going to let straw. it go. I don't it's know. It's these cardboard straws. Yeah. It, why don't you just queef into the fucking mic next time? <laughs> just do a fucking heavy <laughs> Filipino queef. You know, honestly, I could queef on command if you want me to do that right now. Yeah. Can you? Yeah, I can. Yeah. You know what it smells like? Durian fruit. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> anywho. So like, can we go back? I think queefing is so hot. Yeah, I do too. I yeah, I've heard it. Like you've never heard a girl queef. Have only, you had sex in your life? Only on Howard. Well, my penis can't create that suction. Yeah, <laughs> but I've only heard it on Howard Stern. Like when they, the girls come to the mic and they actually just do it. Yeah, you know. And also like exotic, stinky fruit in air form. Yeah, <laughs> just hitting my just face. in my face. You know what I mean? So it feels good, is why when it rolls out the pussy, it actually feels really good. Uh, okay, can we can we hot go? take? Gilbert only does missionary style. <laughs> Hey, hot take, hot take. Um, I'm talking about my personal life. Here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Seriously. Yeah, hot take. Hello. I'm sorry, um, sweetie. So then, you know, I didn't know how to um, process anything. And then... It was so funny. Sorry. We, can't we talked about queefing. <laughs> I know, I know. And then I relapsed. Yeah. I talked about it first. And I just... Could, I just... I don't know. I didn't know. I don't know what else to do. I... um. I started drinking and I went in fast. It just went fast. And I apologize, George. I mean, George had to do a bunch of bullshit and I'm so sorry. You all, you all I'm sorry for all, everyone. You especially, baby. You had the worst. I know. I was just thinking about Mexico, about what I had put them through. But, mm -hmm. but everyone in my life went through hell. You know that. Um... But what ended up happening is I started, you know, drinking and using, it's just smoking pot, but um, I was smoking cigarettes as well and smoking. So what I would do is, you know, I, I just want to tell marijuana companies, um, just from my heart to you, can you please put in dosages on edible packages? Because, you know what I mean? I don't know how many to take, right? Like a recommendation. Yeah, yeah two. Mm. You know what I mean? 10 milligrams, right? I would take, I'm not kidding you, anywhere between, you saw, 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams. I have a hot take. What? I think that even if they were to put every specific <laughs> word of information for <laughs> Instruction. you. Instruction. Yeah. It's like Unisom. Unisom tells you, do not take more than this many a day, and you were taking 20 a day. Oh. Not 20 a day. Oh. That's exaggerate five. But I'm just saying, it, that's yeah, not yeah, what, yeah. you were know, going to yeah. abuse it regardless of what's on the label. Okay, is that the last hot take you're gonna do? The first hot take was George about Gilbert's missionary <laughs> style. Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. That was about, the first hot take. All right, all right. That okay. was my first hot take. All right, my bad. So can I get may, may, may I move on? Yeah. With the story. So um, so I was taking a lot, and every time I use something, a phenomenon happens, and I went to several different places in the last month, and reputable places, and um. I go into a, some sort of manic. It's not mania, but I go into an, an, a, a place where I just can't eat or sleep. And no matter how hard I try, I can't do it. You know what I mean? I could drink, like, you know, saw me drinking. You know, I would drink alcohol. You know what I mean? Shots of, you know, fire. What's my Ball, favorite? Fireball. Fireball. And I would drink a bunch of fireball, beer, smoke beet, weed. I just couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat, you know, and I was losing weight. And, um, like, I was literally getting one or two hours a night, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, if that, for months. Meanwhile, going to, like, Hawaii, New York, Mexico, back to Hawaii, back to New York, shooting shit, right? I don't remember really any of it. I, I You know, during shoots, I don't use, but, but toward the end, 
I was. I mean, when I when we did the Jim Gaffigan episode, like you obviously were very you didn't want anyone to know that you had relapsed, but you were sweating so profusely. So I know you were withdrawing. I want to apologize so to Gaffigan because I honestly I've been dreaming to have that guy on my podcast. And you know, the reaction of it people kinda liked I don't know remember I didn't read the, any of the reactions, but you know, there wasn't anything real negative, but um I just was not my right self. Well, you were withdrawing, so that's why you were... Sw- it was cold in this room. It was terrible. It was terrible. The ter- amount of terrible. sweat. Do you guys remember that? She we were like, what is happening? You also wore a gray shirt. It was... Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> sweat ring around So, so I'm going to tell you what happened. So what happened was, I, because I was smoking pot and cigarette, cigarettes, I started um, coughing up blood. Mm. And I would like cough up... It would be like dark red blood in my mucus, Right with other colors in it that I had never seen before. Um, my chest started hurting real bad. Real bad, yeah. I couldn't breathe. And um, and then Bob Saget died. And when they said that, um, at the time, they didn't know what happened. Maybe it was a heart attack, but he died in his sleep. And what was disturbing about it is, is that, you know, I know that the day before Bob had died, he talked to a good friend of mine who I'm friends with, and Bob was feeling great. He was so happy that he was back on the road. And he, fin- he I think he said, um, I'm finally finding my voice again. I'm so, you know, and then he died. And I, they, there was no other. And I just went, I started fixating on death because, you know, I started coughing up this blood, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I convinced myself that I had lung cancer. And then Louis died. And, you know, Louis, I've opened for On the Road. Louis um, is just a friend of mine. I love him. And then I just kind of, and without even processing their death, I just just started really just focusing on the days I had left on Earth. And I thought it was, I, could, I was convinced mm-hmm. that I was going to die. I was fucking convinced. And then um, I ended up in a a trap, which is... Couldn't eat, couldn't sleep. I'm dying. I'm using more than I've ever used in my life. And then it was like being in a prison in my mind. I was stuck. And, you know, one night I just looked at Kalila and I said, I need help. I, 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 yeah, I can't go on. I can't go on. So um, th- then the nightmare began. You know, I had some really fucking nightmarish things happen. Number one, we went to a place. I'm not going to name the place. Which is highly <laughs> recommended. Highly right? recommend place. On where? Yelp? <laughs> like, that, this is good joke. Happen. The story. There's the joke that I needed. <laughs> the way you described it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds like well, a restaurant here. in the valley. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, here's It was at the Ha Ha Cafe yeah. on Lancashire. <laughs> What happened was all of these people were like, you're going to the best place in America. Mm-hmm. We've been there. It changed my life. And like people that were like close to us, right? Yeah. So what we didn't know is the place had gotten bought out in the mm-hmm. last year and is no longer a treatment center that like is like, oh, here's a group of 20 people that we're going to like do intense work with. It's now like a rehab mill Yeah. where it's like just 150 to 200 people. 50 people like just a little exaggeration i exaggerated you that exaggerated that yeah so let's go back to what the real number is the real number is they said that there was 15 people at one point you know that would they would do that and the real number is about 80 still okay. a lot That's you know but, but also the same staff uh-huh. the amount of staff right so you're mm-hmm. not getting specific but that's not even that it's like when i was so first of all it was funny because she's like First of all, she got mad at me. Get, get this. She gets mad at me for using before going to rehab. Now, I only used before going to rehab because I don't want to be the only person in the history of going to rehabs showing up to rehab sober. <laughs> Who fucking does that? Yeah. Hey, guys. You don't want to be a loser. I've been sober for three months. Well, tell let's, why- let's do this. No, I want to show up naked with a stop sign wrapped around my neck <laughs> on fire. I mean, that's why. That's how you show up to rehab. Grove collaborative for your sake. We need 